many years ago now, I did a video on how to, um, or how it might have been possible, I'm not saying it was actually done, but uh, how it would have been possible to rapidly fire this Remington 1858 army. Um, I think they are some of the finest revolvers ever made. So you have the steel frame there, um, the brass frame, um, both uh, Pieta um, copies, um, reproductions of the original. Uh, so they were considered 44 caliber, even though um, uh, the balls that are used are uh, 45 caliber, 0 0.452, 0 0.454. Um, and the conversion cylinders, which is out there. So w when they got away from the cap and ball, they um, obviously went to cartridges. And uh, you know, the first ones were rim fires and later center fires. So the 45 Colt works very well with the Remington. And that's the way it went there. So, I did this video, and um, many people asked, how did I do it? How did I keep firing? Um, and the reason they asked that, because obviously they own one, and there is a problem. Um, well, not really a problem, but... Um, The cylinder pin on the um, Remington jams very quickly. You know, you might get one cylinder, uh, and by the end of the second cylinder, it's jamming. So, okay, that's the cylinder, just in case you didn't know. This is the cylinder pin. All right, and it we removed easily. Um, but what happens is, when you start firing, the um, the soot, the ash, whatever it is, the fouling, um, jams up that cylinder. And it took me a while to work it out myself. And you can even see, if I can hold this real steady, just there, um, you know. Okay, so I just want to quickly talk about the. Uh, there is a lot of advice on the internet, and I'm not going to go into powder charges or anything like that. You can, you know, follow your directions, use a safe charge, and um, do whichever you want to do there. But. Um, there is a trick to be unable to make sure that cylinder pin um, continues to be removable. There is a trick to it. And it's got, it, it's really simple. Uh, it's got a little bit to do with lube. Uh, mostly it's just got to do with how you load it. But I just want to say there, um, uh, I have a preference for um, lubes, and I have a preference for powders, um, and you can do whatever you want there, and I'm just going to tell you my opinion, and, um, you can take it from there. So, uh, first off, let's start with, um, the, the bullet lube. This is what you will, um, be putting over the bullet. The bullet lube, this is loaded, so I'll be real careful here. And you can see the bullet lube in the front of that cylinder. Bullet lube does a couple of things. Um, first and foremost, it um, prevents chain fire. So that is where blast from the front of the cylinder um, can actually set off charges in multiple um, uh, cylinders around this one's unloaded so see the multiple cylinders there 
So imagine all of those going off at once. That's called a chain fire. You, you definitely want to avoid that. So you want the bullet lube to prevent chain fire. Uh, you also want the bullet lube to um, prevent fouling. Uh, black powder gets a pretty bad rap. All right, that's real black powder. It gets a pretty bad rap for being um, bad fouling. Uh, totally undeserved, by the way. But anyway, it, it happens. Uh, so if you use the correct lube, um, the fouling, um, I think the term becomes softer. So in, in effect, um, you can keep shooting and it doesn't actually, doesn't lead the barrel as bad and doesn't foul the mechanism of the gun as bad. But you've got to use the correct lube. And, um, so I, I want, one thing I want to, um, say, get a good video of that. That there, Crisco, you do not want to use Crisco. Now, that's something I've seen recommended, um, you know, from very experienced people that Crisco is the thing to use. Uh, Crisco is not the thing to use. Uh, multiple reasons for that. One, uh, I guess I like the um, uh, history of the, you know, the black powder firearms, and um, I want to keep to something as uh, realistically historical as possible. And uh, Crisco is not it, um, but that's not too bad because it does look, it does look a lot like uh, lard or bacon fat, which was historically used. Um, so, don't use Crisco. Crisco is bad. Um, use lard. Lard is much better. Okay, so that's one thing. Historically, no, there was no Crisco. Um, but that, that's a minor thing. Uh, secondly, the Crisco uh, is a much... Uh, it, it's very oily, very greasy, and... Um, it will um, um, basically make your make the firearm uh, very greasy, very slippery. So, yeah, I, I don't go for the Crisco for that thing. But that's not even the worst, all right? Because I could say the same thing about lard. Uh, lard would do, does the same does the same thing. It makes the firearm when it's been fired, it makes the firearm very slippery, very greasy, very fast. Uh, and there is a, a commercial product called um, um, Boar Butter, which I had some of a while ago. And um, it was very similar to lard and to Crisco in consistency and in how horrible it was to actually use um, you know, for the firearm. You know, it's, it's just good. It, when you fire the gun, it blows that lard, Crisco, ball butter, it blows it everywhere. Um, and you end up with a nasty, slippery firearm. So, uh, traditionally, they would have used, um, I, I think in the uh, 1800s, late 1800s, uh, Civil War area, they would have used um, whatever they had available. But uh, bacon grease, which is lard, was very popular. And um, also tallow, which tallow is um, um, fat, you know, animal fat from sheep or from um, cattle. So that would have been very popular. Uh, tallow is a much firmer consistency than lard. Lard is very, very soft. So, for my personal bullet lube, um, lard is very easy to buy. In fact, you'll buy lard in exactly the same place as what you'll buy Crisco at uh, your local Walmart or wherever you want to buy it from. Um, but what I do for my bullet lube is um, I mix lard with um, beeswax. And this is what I've got there. Okay, 
So that's that's my bullet loop. That's what I use. I vary it a little bit depending on the time of year. Um, winter time, I want it probably a little bit more lard, a little bit less beeswax during the winter. During the summer, I'll probably go for a little bit more um, beeswax. So I want it a bit firmer during the summer. And that's, that's pretty important because, and I'll try and demonstrate this later, um, but when you fire one of these firearms, um, I find that the, uh, the lard, or the Crisco, or the bore butter, they, they blow out of the front of the cylinder very quickly, and you end up with hardly any lubricant there. So, uh, that's why I like to make it a little bit firmer. Alright, uh, and I haven't finished why I don't like Crisco. Alright, and the third and um, most serious reason why I do not like Crisco is that it is not natural when it is exposed to heat and oxidization, it turns into like a glue. Now, if you are the top person that cleans your gun every day after you use it, um, maybe that's not an issue. Okay, but I regularly keep my black powder firearms loaded. Um, and lubed, and they can go for months um, without, without getting a full strip and assemble. Well, that means not only pulling out and cleaning the cylinder, but actually cleaning out all these internals as well. Now, what happens with Crisco is that it actually turns to like a glue, literally turns to a glue, and um, you'll end up with the... If you don't do it every day, you'll end up with the internal mechanisms of your firearm coated. Okay, and uh, some of you may have noticed, and there's a lot of talk about um, <clears throat> wads, using wads instead of grease, lube. Um, I occasionally use wads, but it's more for um, uh, charge spacing, you know, if I want to uh, put less of a charge in a cylinder. Um, they and I don't consider them very reliable for actually lubing the bore or taking care of anything. But anyway, if you want to use um, wads, by all means, do what you want with them. But I would recommend that you always use um, bullet lube. Another, <coughs> excuse me, another little trick, and I'll show you how to use this later. But uh, so um, most, um, I don't know if I should say brand names, but most of your um, lip. Um, you know, like chapsticks and whatnot, um, can be used, like if you're in a pinch, um, if you want to use uh, chapstick, or uh, I think there's one by Burt's Bees, which I would really recommend as a bullet lube, um, if they're more natural, <coughs> you can use any of these as an emergency bullet lube. Um, and then when you've used them, you can refill them. And this here, uh, this is one of my little tricks. This here is filled with um, my own bullet lube, which is this stuff here, which is beeswax and lard. So um, not only is it a pretty handy bullet lube, but probably be pretty decent as a um, uh, lip, um, you know, chapstick or whatever. So anyway, that's. I'll, I'll show you how to use that later. Okay, next is powders. <coughs> I like, uh, I, I want to keep things as original as possible. Um, you know, I, I love the history, I love the smoke and the bang, and so um, when I can get it, and that is not very often, to be honest, um, the 
original black powder is the stuff that I want to use. Um, this can's getting a bit, in, a bit old, but it was double FG. Um, black powder, and that is my preferred um, preferred product. Next up would be the Hodge. How do you say that? Hodgedon? Hodgedon? Triple F? Or double F, doesn't make too much difference to me, to be honest. Um, I will say that this here, the uh, Hodgedon Triple Seven, um, has noticeably more power than the real black powder. Um, so you have to adjust your measurements. Um, to suit, you know, whatever you want to try to do. So if you load this the same way as you're loading that, you might end up with the bullets that are spinning too fast, you end up letting your barrel. So I've noticed that. <coughs> there is another uh, product on the market, which I think was the original substitute for the real black powder, called um, Pyrodex. And I don't like Pyrodex that much. Um, it works fine. But it seems more susceptible to um, atmospheric conditions. I had uh, okay, so that's a small flask for um, reloading, and I had some Pyrodex in a thing like this, and maybe it was six months. But after six months' time, it had actually absorbed moisture. Well, I'm assuming it was moisture. Maybe it was the the heat and cool. I don't know. But anyway, after um, about six months time the stuff that was in here uh, was noticeably less powerful than it was originally so I went back to the Pyrodex original container you know like this and um, got some fresh stuff put it in and it was noticeably more powerful powerful so um, so Pyrodex seems to be much more susceptible to um, atmospheric conditions that's why I don't like it as opposed to the triple seven. Okay, and uh, so really, what this comes back to is the ability to um, load and reload uh, quicker than normal. Something um, I'm just going to mention this real quickly. Um, so. One of the things that was used in the past, historically speaking, uh, is paper cartridges. Either they're just the paper, such as that, okay, or they are the paper with a um, lead ball inside, okay. Uh, you're going to want to make your paper cartridges. You know, this here is just a wooden dowel type setup that you just roll your um, um, yeah, smoke papers. Your anyway, supposedly these are for smoking a cigarette, and it's supposedly nitrated, so that they burn away cleanly <laughs> um, when that catches fire. Uh, in my experience, uh, if you're going to use paper cartridges, just pour the paper out into the cylinder. You know, pour the powder out into the cylinder and um, discard the paper because what I've found is when you put the paper straight into the cylinder and then fire it, the, um, uh, the blast, the charge, the pressures in the cylinder will actually blow the paper back into the nipples and you'll end up having to use something like that um, you've probably seen those sort of things before anyway they're for cleaning out um, the nipples and a lot of other small holes so okay um, yeah paper cartridges have their uh, have their place but um, they are definitely not my favorite you so if I just want a few extra um, uh, shots 
first time going away for a weekend and we've decided to take the 58 as a um, carry piece for whatever reason. I might just carry something like this. So we've got some old cartridges, large um, uh, capacity cartridges and um, those are filled with black powder and I've got the ball, uh, I've got my lube stick and I've got my uh, caps in a capper. Okay. Alright, so I'm about to have to show you the, the secret to, and this is so simple, you're going to be sorry you watched all the way to the end. Um, the secret to loading your 58 so that the cylinder pin doesn't jam. Uh, these are my um, my chargers. So uh, there are an old 303 cartridge filled with the right amount of powder. So it doesn't really matter how much charge you're actually putting in these. I mean, you can. Uh, you can set them up for a power load, or you can set them up for a target load, or something in between. Um, but you do want uh, consistent compression of the ball over the powder, and you do want um, uh, consistent results as far as, you know, you, you want one charge to go bang and you want the next charge to go bang. You don't want the next charge after that to go pop. You know, you, know, you want a consistent level um, of loading. So you're going to want to measure. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that too much, except, I'll, you know, there's uh, measuring cups. Um, so this is a 45 ACP case, you know, soldered to a piece of copper so that's for um, one of my loads that's an actually fairly um, fairly good measurement for what I want to do um, these things here are supposed to put out the exact um, amount of charge whether it's 20 20 grains or 30 grains or whatever so it just depends you know on um, the size of this thing here so anyway However you get it, however you do it, uh, you want each one of those six cylinders to have, as close as possible, the exact same amount of black powder or black powder substitute. Uh, so I've already measured them out, and I put those um, measurements into these here. They're old 303 cartridges. Uh, and the other thing I will say before I actually do the loading and show you this simple trick uh, is with the Pieta, uh, with the Pieta clones, the Remington number 10s are the cap to use. Okay, and that was a very good example. I just dropped my cylinder and uh, in my original video, uh, I was given a little bit of a hard time because uh, one of the, the dangers of this is that if you have a fully loaded cylinder with the caps on the end, you effectively have a firearm ready to fire. So if I drop that onto a hard surface, just like it did, just like then, um, it could have come down, hit a rock, and um, you know, gone off, and actually be flying back at me. So it was very. Um, people were right to give me a hard time about that. Uh, I will say that I took precautions when I did that last video. I had a mattresses down on the side, on the ground, so that there was nothing hard to um, to set off the uh, the caps. So, um, you know, I took precautions and, and there was no one else around me. But um, that is something that is, uh, that, that could definitely happen. I could definitely see that happen. So you've got this fully loaded. You've got caps on there. You drop it, 
hits something hard, it goes off, and all of a sudden you have a bullet coming out the end of the barrel. Maybe it's not as powerful as out the end of the full length barrel, but uh, someone did a bit of an experiment. I think they said it was still coming out at 500 feet per second, so that's still deadly. So anyway, um, uh, don't do that. Load it, load it up, put it in the firearm, and then put the caps on just to be on the safe side. And that's what I'm going to do now. So, uh, I've already measured out my cylinders, my, my charges, which is these things here. And you'll notice that this is not on the gun. And that's, that's really the simple trick. I'm not going to tell you my charges. That's for you to work out with whatever propellant you are using. Whether it's real black powder or whether it's 777. Okay, all six are charged. I'm now going to put it. Into the fire, into the pistol. Put the hammer at half cock. That's what you have to do with these ones, so that the, the cylinder will revolve cleanly. And then put the ball into there. And then push down on the ball with the loading lever. Okay. Uh, I will say that um, I have used um, a lot of real white lead instead of pure lead and there's a pin just inside here and I've managed to shear it off about three times now so this, these are pure lead so I shouldn't have that problem today thankfully and just gently down Another thing, I've been threatening to uh, buy myself a loading, um, an actual loading stand, and I think that would make a big difference to my accuracy because I have trouble, even though I have put in exactly the right amount of powder, I have trouble um, setting the ball at exactly the right, exactly the same level so a loading uh, a separate loading table separate loading stand I think would make a huge difference okay so I have all six balls fitted and I'm gonna take the cylinder out again still does not have any caps on it uh, I said I'd show you this so this is my bullet lube it's just beeswax and lard and uh, you know if you're in a Fine, this will do you well. Normally I just get it straight out of the pot. Okay. Yeah, each lipstick thing seems like it does about one per cylinder. Okay, loop it around in there. that six cylinders and you notice the cylinder pinhole has a little bit of grease in there not a lot uh, but that there that there is the whole trick getting a little bit of grease at every loading into that cylinder pinhole it is preferable that that grease is um, pure lard it doesn't have I mean it should be softer preferably than the actual bullet lube but it doesn't matter too much, especially if the weather's warmer. Um, okay, so there's that ready to go. And I fit it to the firearm. Oh, 
one other thing I'm going to show you. Still no caps in there. I'm not sure. I'm going to bring this up there so you can see it. I don't know if you can see that there. But when you push that lube through, it actually pushes pushes the loop all the way through to where the hammer is. Okay? And most of the time that's not an issue. See that there? Most of the time that's not an issue. But if it builds up or if the weather's really cold, it can actually prevent the hammer from firing. So you may want to take that out. Last thing to do is to cap. So put it half cock so that the cylinder spins freely. Much prefer the capping tool if you have one. My fingers are getting too clumsy to fit them in without the capping tool. Okay, push them down firmly. Okay, there's a center point between each of the caps. You should be able to put the hammer down on that and uh, it's ready to fire. Um, I guess one other safety thing, and I'm sure I've missed a lot of safety things, but uh, never leave an open container of powder or an open, um, you know, the actual main container. So never leave anything here that could be ignited by the firing of the uh, pistol because it, they, they, it definitely can happen. So here I just want to demonstrate um, why I prefer a little bit more um, firmness to my bullet loop. This is, this is pretty hard to see, but you should be able to see that's really light and all the rest are dark, uh, darker. Okay, so there, all these here have got a little bit of um, beeswax in it, whereas that one there is pure lard. cylinders and then decap before I pull it out. Uh, reason for that is I have a little bit of a, uh, talking about chain fire earlier, I'm actually worried about chain fire from the rear as well, so I always put a cap on something. Okay, so then I'm going to index through till I can see the, okay, there we go. Okay, 
So, hopefully that was the right one. Half cock. I'm going to pull off all these. Pretty good. Let's see if I can zoom in on that from here. Okay. <clears throat> so that there. This is the cylinder that I fired. This here is the one that had the lard. It's almost, almost all that lard is completely gone. But the one next to, you know, they're both right next to the um, firing chamber. I keep saying cylinder, but that's a chamber. Cylinder is the whole thing. Um, the one right next to it with the um, beeswax and lard has still got most of the loop in it. Um, so, that, that's why I, I prefer something that's got a little bit more um, firmness to it. 